So recently I posted on Instagram that I'm gonna be launching a free six week masterclass where I'm gonna be sharing everything you need to know about creating high quality visuals for your product using the free software Blender. In this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you the step by step on how I created this tool render with the project file ready to download for free. We're gonna model this perfume from scratch, showing you some tips and tricks on how to make a good looking model with the perfect topology. Then I'm gonna show you a simple and effective way to texture the glass inside Blender and how you can make this wavy branch. And for the lighting, I'm gonna walk you through how I did the lighting for these two scenes from scratch. Also some interesting tips and tricks on how you can make your glass lighting looks better. We'll finish that by post-processing it inside Photoshop to make it stand out. So, I'm not a fan of wasting others time, the long step by step tutorial with no cuts, no edits will be available on my website, link in the description, also it's free. And you can still follow along with this if you know the basics of Blender. At the end of this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to get the most out of it, by giving you a homework to apply what you learn. And you can also share with us the final result in the discord group, where you can get feedback from really good talented artists. Again, the project file in the description, also the Discord group if you want to ask any questions, let's get into it. If you download the project file, you're gonna be able to see something like that. First, I'm gonna start blocking our scene by adding a plane, rotating it, and placing it behind my object to act as a background. You can add a camera by pressing Shift A and add a camera, and you can go to the camera view by pressing 0 on your notepad. And don't forget to increase the focal length. Let's add some light for a texture previewing. Add an area light and position it in the front side. It doesn't need to be perfect, we can remove it later. Split your view and switch to the shader editor. Select your plane and give it a translucent BSDF. Add an area light and place it behind the plane. Note, this is how you can create gradient background. I'm gonna go with a pinkish color in the translucent BSDF. I think the background looks a bit dark, so I'll increase the strength of the light. Now it's better. For the texturing, it's really simple. Select the body. I'm gonna go with the glass BSDF with the roughness set to 0.1. Move on to the liquid, select the inner part, and give it again a glass BSDF. Now with the roughness set to 0. For this, I'm gonna give it a pinkish color. In the same place, add the hue saturation node. Set your mouse on top of the color panels, Ctrl C, and go there and press Ctrl V to copy it. And this is how you can copy colors inside Blender without the hex code. So, connect these two nodes and then break the value to 1.2. Maybe you're gonna ask why we did this. I found it make the glass stand out more. But let me show you the difference and you're gonna understand what I mean. Select the top part, add the glass BSTF, give it around 0.2 to 0.3 in the roughness. For the inside thing, it's just a principal BSTF with a metallic set to 1. For this middle trap, I have two materials, the top and the bottom one as a metallic set to one. The middle one is just a simple principle BSDF. Now let's bring up our branch. To make it stylized, we just need to go to the shader editor and plug a color ramp between the image and the base color to turn it into a black and white value. Select the black slider and I'm gonna go with a lighter gray. Select the other one and give it a pinkish color. Select the lighter one and move it closer to the gray. Feel free to pick different colors and play with this. So yeah. So to make to make that wavy branch, it's really simple. First, let's draw a shape on how we want it to be. You can hold D and right click to draw. And you can remove it by holding D again and left click. So I'm gonna draw a basic shape to just show you the method. Now select your branch, scale it and try to adjust it with your draw. It doesn't need to be perfect. Go up here and enable the proportional editing and go to edit mode, select the vertex in this part and click shift S and cursor to select and press dot on your keyboard and switch to 3D cursor. Or you can go just in the top menu up here and choose 3D cursor. What we did now is that we let the 3D cursor to act as a pivot point as you see. Like for example, if you want to rotate now, anything will be rotated perfectly around the 3D cursor. And that can help us to create some really good stuff. So select the vertex in the corner, press R to rotate, and use the scroll wheel to control the circle. And try to match it 
with your reference draw. Same process, shift S, left click to control the 3D cursor. Like as you see, I'm playing with the 3D cursor by using the shift S shortcut and moving things around. Like don't be uncomfortable to stay in here and keep trying until you achieve your desired look. Like me too, I didn't get it in the first attempt. So yeah, after you're done with that, use again the proportional editing or just do tightness in the branch to make it a bit thicker so that it looks realistic. And I almost forgot how to add the label. So shift A, import images plane, select your label and go to edit mode and add loop cut. And adjust the loop cut by pressing G twice because if you press G one time, the image will be stretched and delete the unnecessary part. After that, go to the modifier tab and give it a shrink wrap. Select the bottle as a target object and add a solidify modifier to give it some thickness. And don't forget to add the hue saturation node and increase the value. Lighting. Again, the art of making it simple. I love to break down my lighting process into two parts, fill and highlight. Let's start with fill. To have full control over my light, I set the watch sync to zero. For the first light, I'm gonna target the front side of the product. So, I'll add an area light and I'm gonna place it in the top and move it forward. And don't forget to increase the strength. Stay in the top view, duplicate your light and position it in the other side to target the back. And that's it. Now let's add some highlight. So I'll bring an area light, scale it down to fit the bottom part of the bottle and put it inside it. And don't forget to rotate it to hide the reflection on the bottle and move it up. Maybe I'm gonna give it a pinkish color to match with the vibe. So I'll do the same to the bottom, shift T to duplicate it and move it down. And don't forget to play with the strength and the rotation to achieve the look that you want. And the difference is here. Like I use this method a lot, especially when it comes to lighting glossy product inside Blender. Like you're gonna notice the difference more in here. They also dropped the IUR on the liquid to 0.7. It looks good for me. And this is the workflow that I used to create these two renders. I don't know just me, but I can create the exact same render two times. Like sometimes I forgot how I created, like especially when I'm just playing, I'm just exploring, like having no plan to do it. So I just open the record, try to make this exact render and I'll end up with something different, but the process is the same. So I highly recommend you to stay in this part as long as you can playing with different lighting setup, moving things around and don't be scared to delete everything and do it again. In the same file you're gonna find this flower. This flower is from this artist, actually I don't know how to pronounce his name. He is really good at making realistic animated flower. This flower is from his pack, I asked him for permission to share it with you for free and he agreed. So I highly recommend you to go and check his product, link in the description. For this one, I used the same setup. We have the same background and the same camera. For this, it's just a matter of scattering this flower around the bottle in a good way. So what we did is I drawed a shape around the bottle by pressing D and left click. I'm gonna use this line as a reference to scattering our flower. You can start by duplicating your flowers and move them around. On each duplicate, try to change the variation by scaling or rotating. We can also select them all and choose individual origin and press R X twice and then you're gonna be able to rotate each one on the medium point and I found also making the flowers big looks better than the smaller ones as you see after you finish scattering if you are not satisfied with the result select all your flowers hit slash in your numpad to solo them and go up here and enable the proportional editing and try to adjust the flowers based on what you like using the scroll wheel. So again, don't rush it. For the lighting, I start adding an area light behind the background, but this time the light comes from the top with the higher strength to create the harsh gradient. Next, select the flowers, go to the shader editor and switch the white color to a pinkish one. With this, the flower will match our scene and it will look way better. For the first light, I'm gonna target the top part. So, I'll add an area light, move it up 
and I'm gonna keep the setting by default. Duplicate the same light and make sure that your GED cursor set as a pivot point and it's in the center of your bottle. Now if you press R and rotate, the light will be rotated perfectly around the cursor and then I'm gonna move it slightly back. Again, duplicate light, GED cursor as a pivot point, R, rotate and we are done. I rendered this with color management to IGX and those are my render setting. For the post processing, I do the same thing for all my renders. So to avoid any repetitive stuff, today I'm gonna be posting a reel on my Instagram about how I color grade my render. Okay, the hard truth. This tutorial is not going to help you with anything, unless you practice what you learn. So I highly recommend you to watch it and follow along with it one time. Then open a new project and start practicing what you learn with a different project and different reference. With this, you're gonna start forcing your mind to start remembering what you learned and you're gonna practice one of the most important thing which is problem solving as I said, if you join the discord group you're gonna be able to find the homework with some reference images so you're gonna be able to share with us the final result and give feedback this, and this is totally for free I just want to help as many artists as possible by, by sharing my little knowledge please let me know what you think about this first episode in the description down below again all links in the description. Aside from that, I appreciate you watching and see you in the next week.